up my beautiful fellow nerds? Welcome back to the channel. A few orders of business before I get started. I kind of seriously screwed up. Uh, I already recorded this video and then realized that I never actually turned my microphone on, so I didn't get any audio. So that sucks. So I'm re-recording and starting over from scratch. Ah, the beautiful life of production. Uh, order of business number two, obviously I'm in a very different setup than I normally am. That's because I'm not actually home right now. Uh, I'm actually house sitting for a family member out of town. I'm, I'm no, I'm actually no, I'm actually nowhere near home. I did bring a couple things with me. I brought my laptop and I brought my 3D printers uh, and a bunch of tools and, and junk because I have a major project that I need to get working on this week, which is 3D printing the Fusion 800 typeface. Now, I've talked about this typeface before in multiple different pieces of media that I've released on this channel. Um, in the World Through Electrospecs podcast, we talked about uh, the Fusion 800 typeface and explained kind of what we're working on. I believe that was episode one of uh, TWTE, and uh, you can check that out on the channel as well. I also released a video earlier this summer from when we went to the Hamilton Wood Type and Printing Museum. That also gives you some very good information on this project. But basically, long story short, it is a 3D printed movable typeface that, that will be used on a letterpress printing machine. We will be presenting this project at, at TypeCon 2017 in Boston, Massachusetts later this month. We've done all sorts of research and contacted all sorts of people and worked with all sorts of people and we're ready to actually produce the typeface now. But my goal for today is just to get the height right. Now, when you're working with letterpress printing, um, you have a very specific height that the wood and lead letters have to be at in order to print properly on the letterpress machine. And that is 0.918 inches. And you don't really have a whole lot of room, wiggle room with the tolerances. Apparently this hand motion means tolerances. It should be something more like, well not like this, but like, like this where you're tugging on something, I don't know. So I have here the trusty ampersand, I'll get this in focus here, the classic character to kind of do testing with. Now this outer block size is going to be changed later. Right now I'm only focusing on the height. The height needs to be, like I said, 0.918. Now 0.918 uh, inches translates into 23.3 uh, millimeters. This is about the sixth or seventh part that I've printed uh, in various shapes and sizes. I'm printing in PLA on my uh, Orion and H2. If we go ahead and measure this, you'll see that I've got it pretty close. It's at 0.928, we need to be at 0.918. So it's a little too, it's a little too big. If I'm gonna have it off by 0.01 uh, inches, I'd rather it be a little bit too small because I can shim it up uh, with some paper later. Uh, in the, during the printing process. Having it too big, it's not gonna fit in the, on, the, on the print bed at all. 0.928 translates to be about 23.5 uh, millimeters. So, and I have a 0.15 millimeter height when I'm slicing. I can change that height if I want to, um, but I'm gonna try to keep it at 0.1 millimeter, or 0.15 layer height. So, if I'm currently at 23.5 millimeters, and I need to be at 23.3 millimeters with a 0.15 layer height. If I just remove, if I just shave off two layers, two layers in the printing process, I should be at 23.2, which is exactly 0.1 millimeters off. So if my goal is 23.3, 23.2 is better than 23.5. So my goal for today is to get the height perfect. So I'm going to pull the laptop out here. I've had a few I've had a few minutes to look at some other CAD softwares, but I just haven't had the time to actually donate to focus on on learning them. So I'm still working in Tinkercad. I know Tinkercad is kind of poo-pooed ac across the community, but I don't have any professional CAD software uh, training and Tinkercad works fine for this kind of stuff. And the main purpose of this project is to try to make something cool w with everything being as accessible as pop possible. So I'm using really good value 3D printers that, that are some of the best priced on the market. And I'm also using Tinkercad, which is a free to use web-based CAD design software that's so easy that anybody can use it. This is not sponsored by Tinkercad. Uh, if they want to sponsor me, that'd be fantastic. But let's grab that laptop, let's get working, and uh, get some stuff printed.
miss me. Many a great dark hour has fallen upon us. Much time has passed. Much work has been done. Lo, it is dark. Thankfully, I brought some LED light panels with me. All right, so it's a lot darker now. I apologize for that. Um, a lot of time has passed. Uh, I actually ended up printing this a few more times at a few different other settings. I'll explain it all to you in a second. But basically, I'm at a point where I think I'm happy with this now. All right, really quick, I'm gonna run through this and then I'm gonna go to bed. Basically what I found is shrinkage rate is something that I don't really have to worry about all that much. Um, I'm actually ending up with not as much shrinkage as I thought I would end up with. Um, I know that the atomic filament that I prefer to print in is a lot higher quality than a lot of the other filaments out there. Apparently shrinkage isn't a problem with that filament. I'll probably run into some issues later on in this project with shrinkage, but I'll let you know if I run across that. For now though, um, I'm pretty happy with what I have. So, all these numbers I'm about to throw at you. Our goal is .918 inches. And if it has to be off, I prefer it to be off lower than the margin than higher than the margin because I can adjust accordingly for it to be lower. So the first part that I printed today, I was trying to compensate for what shrinkage I thought I would run into, and I designed this part at 23.5 millimeters, thinking it would shrink a little bit, um, but the measurement actually ended up being 23.54, so it's pretty close. So then I shortened the part up to 23.3, the measurement that it actually needs to be at. Um, that ended up printing to be at 23.47, which is still a little bit too high for my taste. So I took it down a few more notches. The third one that I printed today, I designed this part and printed it at a height of 23.1, thinking I'm adding a little bit more instead of subtracting. Even though with the theoretical shrinkage rate of PLA, uh, you would think that it would end up printing a little bit shorter. In reality, I'm actually, it's actually coming out a little bit taller than I set it to. So I cranked it down to 23.1 millimeters, and that one ended up printing out to be at about 23.23 millimeters. I then decided, what the heck, I'll try one more time. I designed the part at 23.2, and that ended up printing out uh, a little bit larger than it should have yet again, 23.43. So the range at which I can get the accuracy without changing the layer height that I'm printing at, which would drastically increase the print time, is at about plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. But as I mentioned before, I prefer it to be minus than plus. So I believe the winner here, coming in at 23.23 millimeters, is the part that was designed and printed at a height of 23.1. that translates into 0.914 inches. Coming in at 0.914 is close enough for me to be happy with this. Oh man, I'm so tired. All right, my camera battery is about to die. I'm really tired. I'm gonna stop yelling at you guys and uh, being in this terrible, terrible lighting situation here. If you'd like to support my videos and things that I'm doing, please feel free to check out my Patreon. I'll post, I'll post a link to my website. You can check out the sponsors page there and go to my Patreon from there as well. Anyways, I've got more progress to make on this, but I'm gonna save that for later. I'm gonna hit the hay. I'll see you in the next video.